grace and peace be with you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And welcome to worship on Palm Sunday. Today begins our Holy Week journey as we journey with Christ toward the cross. I'm excited. We've got Malika here with us in person for the first time. It's going to be a joy to have her leading our songs live in person here at Wilshire. Uh, and I am uh, excited as we celebrate the special occasion of Palm Sunday. So as we continue to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship, I'm going to light our Christ candle here at Wilshire. And if you have one at home or a lamp that you can turn on, a way to set the tone of this time to remind us that this is a time of worship and that Christ's light is in our lives all the time. I'm going to turn it over to Robert, our liturgist, if you will lead us in our call to worship. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, rejoice, the Lord is here. We greet you, Lord, for it is you that we have come to worship this day, you alone, for you are our king. Hosanna, Hosanna. It is our privilege and pleasure to lay our lives before you and pro proclaim faithfulness to the kingdom you seek for the world. Amen. Let us now say our mission statement together. The New Covenant Fellowship is a racially diverse community informed by the Bible, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and motivated to share God's love with all. In response to God's love, we are called to equip disciples to faithfully serve, to encourage seekers to joyfully commit, and to implore all to worship our Lord as we love our neighbors, grow in grace, and live by faith. Please join like us in, in the singing of Blessed Be Your Name. Joy of 
We come with glad shouts of Hosanna and joyful songs of praise. Yet we still fall short of the glory of God as sin stains even our best intentions. With faith and hope, let us seek God's forgiveness. Triumphant God, we join the crowds of the ages in shouting your praises. While our lips give you glory, our lives seldom uh, reflect your purposes. We sing easily of your greatness, but living faithfully is often beyond us. We hear of your salvation, yet sin is still close and real, daily leading us away from you. Have mercy on us. Ride into our hearts with healing grace. <clears throat> Forgive what we have done and direct who we shall be. Lord, save us. Hosanna. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one who comes with abundant grace and boundless mercy. Blessed is the one who has done for us what we could never do for ourselves, bringing us life and love forever and ever. This is the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. I now invite you to unmute yourselves as we extend God's grace to one another and share the peace we've been given by greeting each other with the words, peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Also with you. Peace of Christ, Robert. Peace, peace of Christ. Christ. Like just Pastor Becca. Peace be with you. Peace, Nikki. Peace, Malika. Peace be with all. We've got Nikki over here, and Danita, oh. I think it's setting up. Peace of Christ, Nikki. <laughs> Peace be with you. I'm sure Danita will be back shortly. So, friends, as we get ready to engage with the word, uh, we're going to use our practice of I wonder. As we open up our hearts and our minds uh, to journey through this word together. And so I invite you to be imaginative for a moment with me. I wonder how everyone knew to celebrate Jesus arriving in Jerusalem. I wonder if anyone realized how difficult the next few days would be. I wonder who we are supposed to relate to in this passage of scripture. Let us ponder those as we invite the Holy Spirit to guide our hearing and reading of the word. I'm going to say a line and you are welcome to repeat it after me and we will invite the Spirit uh, to guide us this day. Let us pray. O oh God, oh God, open our ears, open our ears, and our hearts, and our hearts, so we can hear your word. So we can hear your word. Amen. So this morning we're gonna we're in the Gospel of John still, but we're gonna jump back from where we were these past few weeks. So if you'll recall. The Gospel of John doesn't quite do things in the same order that the other Gospels do. In John, Jesus enters Jerusalem much earlier. There's a lot that takes place during his time there, according to John. And so when we read the scripture, we have to jump back a couple of chapters to actually hear his entry into Jerusalem. 
So this morning, we're going to be in John, and I'm sorry, that is wrong on the slide. We're actually in John 12, verses 12 through 27, and I'm going to link that in the chat for those if you would like to follow at home. Uh, you can grab your Bible or read online uh, and let us listen for the word of God. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it as it is written, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. So the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to testify. It was also because they heard that he had performed this sign that the crowd went to meet him. The Pharisees then said to one another, you see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. Those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. What should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is the re for this reason that I have come to this hour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The other day I was looking at a graph that showed the various waves of COVID we have been through these past few years. Epidemiologists and other experts right now are trying to figure out the trajectory ahead. What is the future of COVID? Will this pandemic end anytime soon? When will COVID become endemic, where it's just another virus that we live with? No one seems to know right now. It isn't clear why cases aren't spiking like they did in Europe last month. But as I look at this graph, I reflected on those seasons of ups and downs, those spikes. It feels similar to what I feel during Lent and Holy Week, spiritual and emotional ups and downs in this case. Today, we find ourselves at Palm Sunday. If we were to compare the liturgical calendar to our experience of this pandemic, I would say that the Palm Sunday moment for me was when I got that second dose of the COVID vaccine last spring. I was excited. I was hopeful. I thought maybe the end is in sight now. But as I looked around, I realized, oh boy, this isn't the end just yet. 
There aren't enough people getting vaccinated to end this pandemic all in one fell swoop. And now two years in, like those epidemiologists, we still don't know what the timeline is. It feels very Palm sunday -y in the world right now. There's hopefulness mixed with uncertainty. The people in the crowd that day, they were beaming with excitement. This was the day they had long waited for. Year after year, they hoped that the Messiah would come and now he has. They think Jesus has come to conquer, to take over the throne, to end their suffering and to make all things right. They are so filled with hope that this would be the day that changes everything. And it does. This week, this holy week, it does change everything, but not in the way that great crowd expects. Because if they were paying attention, they would see that this Jesus fellow, he is a different kind of king. Did anyone else notice that Jesus goes and finds his own donkey, according to John? This detail in the story, it amuses me. Here's Jesus, the king of kings, arriving for his big moment, and he has to go find his own transportation. I recall some advice I got toward the end of my time at seminary. It was from a seasoned pastor who said that anyone who wants to lead the church must also be willing to use a plunger to unclog the toilet in the nursery when those little ones put a whole bunch of toilet paper in there and make a mess of it. I think what they were trying to say is that humility is key for effective leadership in the church. And there's certainly something to that if we take a cue from Jesus here. There's humility in this act of going to fetch his own donkey. But it also shows that he knows exactly what is going on here. He knows how the events are to play out. The crowds, the disciples, they're still pretty clueless. But he knows that the cross waits for him on the other side of this parade. And in his faithful obedience, he continues on that walk. He knows he needs a donkey, but not just any donkey, a colt. This is a throwback to Zechariah 9, which John quotes in our passage today. The prophet says that the king will ride in on a young colt. It is a fitting sign for his kingship. It was common for kings to ride in on a donkey. That's not usually what we would think of, but donkeys were meant for transportation. Horses were reserved for war. And so this donkey is a sign of royal claim, making it clear that he is a king riding in. The donkey of Palm Sunday has been a muse for poets. G.K. Chesterton wrote that the donkey carries in the tattered outlaw of the earth as shouts resound about her ears and palms are laid at her feet. Mary Oliver's work conveys the feelings of the donkey saying, I hope finally she felt brave. I hope finally she loved the man who rode her so lightly and lifted one dusty hook and stepped forward as she had to. I love that image of the donkey feeling brave and knowing what she had to do. I think about all the people involved in this story, how confusing and terrifying this must have been to journey with Jesus into that holy week. But that donkey knows her place carried that humble man, that different kind of king, into that city. I think that this donkey most accurately conveys how we are supposed to respond on Palm Sunday. 
Perhaps it isn't so much about shouting Hosanna and waving palm branches like the crowds. The donkey reveals the faithful role on Palm Sunday. She is obedient, even though she's probably aware there's something very strange going on with this event. Why would the crowds call this man the king? This man who doesn't even have a home to call his own. This man who travels the countryside, eating with the poor and healing the sick. This man who would wash the feet of his betrayer right alongside his other disciples. A different kind of king, to be sure. None of this makes sense, really. And yet the donkey carries this king into the holy city toward his fate that is bleak. Not celebrating it, but faithfully carrying Jesus and walking that road for him. Karl Barth, that's B-A-R-T-H, not to be confused with Karl Marx, which caused some confusion in a sermon I gave several years ago. Karl Barth is a reformed theologian from the 20th century, and he's influenced much of what we believe in the Presbyterian Church. Well, he had this lovely sentiment about that donkey. On his 80th birthday, Barth reflected on his life and his work, and he wrote, a real donkey is mentioned in the Bible. It was permitted to carry Jesus to Jerusalem. If I have done anything in this life of mine, I have done it as a relative of the donkey that went on its way carrying an important burden. Thus, I was used, I just happened to be on the spot, a theology somewhat different than the current theology was apparently needed for our time, and I was permitted to be the donkey that carried this better theology for part of the way, or tried to carry it as best I could. As Christians, we are called to be like this donkey. We carry an important burden on our backs, but we are called to do so with humility and faithfulness, knowing that it is a difficult journey but knowing that it is an honor to walk with Jesus and to be the body of Christ in the world today. May we enter this holy week hearing that call to walk with Jesus, knowing that the burden is heavy, but that the reward is great. Amen. and Malaika to come up and lead us in singing promises. This might be a new song to some of us, um, but it's a beautiful one, and I'm glad she selected it.
far from way to way, through the earth may pass away, your words stay today, yeah, your history can grow, there's nothing you can do, you're faithful and you're true, though the storm may come and the wind may blow over it, Together, let us say our affirmation of faith from uh, Philippians chapter 2. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess to the glory of God. Jesus is, Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. With gratitude for God's faithfulness and with thanksgiving for all that we have received, let us bring our gifts to God. We invite you to send your offerings in the mail to our church, or you may donate online through our website. Those who are gathered at Wilshire are invited to come up to touch the basket as a sign of your dedication to God. Now let us together sing the doc, doc, doxology as we dedicate our offerings. <laughs>
For our friends at home, I invite you, if you've not already done so, to grab something to eat and something to drink so that we can celebrate communion together. We know that the Holy Spirit can work in ways we don't always understand to bring the real presence of Christ uh, to you and to what you have at home. Welcome to our young disciples. Come on in and find a seat. Glad you're joining us for our holy meal. Should be a spot for everybody. And plenty more. And plenty more, yes. <laughs> so friends, this is the table of our Lord. This is the table that Jesus sets for us to show us just how much we are loved. He celebrated this this meal with his friends, with his disciples. And so it is appropriate for us to celebrate it together because we are disciples. We are followers of Jesus. And he says, if you even have just a little bit of faith, you are welcome to enjoy this meal. It's not up to us, the church, not up to me as the pastor, to decide who is worthy and who is not. Because Jesus declares that you are worthy. Let us pray. Gracious God, in the very beginning, you created all things out of nothing. And you spoke your love into this world. You created us in your image to enjoy us and be in relationship forever. But Lord, we fell away from you. We got into trouble and we fell into sin and we couldn't hear you when you called us back. It wasn't until in the fullness of time that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, the one who would embody love and mercy and reconciliation, the one who would bring us back to you. We are thankful for this gift. Gracious one, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Unite us with all of the saints in every time and every place who fellowship at this table. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. On the night that our Lord was arrested, he was at supper with his disciples, and he took some bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it, and he said, this is my body given for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, after supper, he took a cup. And as he poured it out, he said, this is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the saving power of our risen Lord. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Ben, would you like to come up and hold the cup this week? Mm -hmm. You could do that? Okay, I'll hold it steady. Hold it from there. Perfect. Okay. Friends who are at home, I invite you to serve yourselves and one another. And those who are here, you can come up whenever you're ready and receive the bread. Mm -hmm. And there's juice boxes here if you prefer that. That way. Sorry, this is the body of Christ. The body or if you of really want to, you can get the cup and it. Absolutely. <laughs> and the Sorry, this is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. And the cup of salvation. And this is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. And the cup of salvation. And this is the body of Christ. Thank you. 
Friends, we remember that this table is where we experience God's love. And as we go from this table, as we go about our lives, we remember that God calls us to share that love with everyone we encounter. And part of that is being an encourager. And so I would invite us, if anyone needs encouragement, either ourselves or someone that we know, uh, to reach out, to pray for one another, to be good listening ears, and to be those encouragers for one another, because that's part of being a church family, is being here for each other. Let us pray now. Gracious God, we thank you that in this meal we encounter your mercy and your grace and your love. We pray that we would share that love everywhere we go throughout this holy week. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. All right, our young disciples, you can head back to the classroom if you like. You're welcome to stay out here too. Juice boxes. announcements to share for this holy week. The first is that our Palm Sunday prayer walk is happening after worship today. Zanita has it set out in the park, I believe. She's got some really awesome creative plans. For those unable to get here to the park, I would encourage you today or sometime this week to go to your local park somewhere close to you and just spend some time in prayer. Uh, it can be one of the most uh, holy and encouraging practices to pray through your neighborhood or through a park where you often uh, visit and enjoy. Uh, so that will be after worship today here at Patterson. And then our Monday Thursday uh, service has turned into a meditation. Mandy and I are working on a recording that you can watch on your own. It's going to have words of scripture. It's going to have prayer and some music. And then, if you would like to gather on Monday Thursday, we're going to have a Zoom at 8 o'clock that evening. And we're just going to spend time in prayer. It's not going to be super structured. Uh, if you want to bring a cup of tea or uh, your, your snack before bed, we can fellowship together from home uh, and lift one another up in prayer uh, and lift our world up in prayer as well. So that will be Thursday at 8 o'clock, and the email will get sent out uh, early this week with both the recording and the Zoom link for that time. And then next weekend, there are two opportunities for Easter egg hunts. The first is in Patterson Park on Saturday, and I believe they changed it to 10 a.m. Uh, in case it is warm that day. So 10 o'clock, right uh, in our backyard here, there will be an Easter egg hunt and a potluck brunch. If you wanna bring some food, you can gather with our neighbors. And then there was talk of bringing back our Easter egg hunt. And so after worship on Easter, we're gonna have our usual hunt out here on the lawn. You can bring donations, uh, filled eggs, and bring them here, drop them off before worship. And some of our older young folks uh, are gonna hide those uh, at the end of worship. So we will gather on the lawn for fellowship and an egg hunt next uh, Sunday for Easter. And then finally, coming up at the end of May, we've got our special, we're going to have a three-part series called Tell Me a Story, Tell Me the Truth, through the Undocumented Stories Project. 
uh, that was started at APTS, started at the seminary. And this is an opportunity for those who have migrated, immigrated to America to tell their story and to shed some light on what actually goes through that process and what prompted them to come here. Um, it can bring some tremendous compassion to the narrative um, that we in the church think is much needed. So join us for that event at four o'clock on the last Sunday in May. And there's gonna be food and music uh, and storytelling uh, for that event. And I think that is all for announcements. So I invite you to hear now our charge and benediction. Friends, it may seem a little bit odd to want to be like a donkey. But in our story for today, that is the character who most shows us what it means to walk with Jesus, to carry that burden, but to do so with faithfulness and to know that we are walking that path with our Lord. So may we do that each and every day, especially as we embark on this holy week. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.